So I'm I'm grateful. Yes, we yeah. did. We did that interview in tw- in 2018, yes. prior to the pandemic, uh, when you were appointed the, the as the, the the leader of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church um, yes. after the uh, passing of of, uh, of our great leader, um, and um, that 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 was a that was a, a very um, it was a beautiful time, but it was a time where people needed to know that they had a trusted leader in you. W- what was that like after coming from, you know, what Eddie Long had done for the for for not only the city of Atlanta, but just for God? Well, the embattled pastor of an Atlanta area megachurch says that he will address a deepening sex scandal from the pulpit. Bishop Eddie Long has 25,000 followers at the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. He says that he'll talk to his congregation at the church on Sunday. As you know, three men have filed lawsuits claiming Long coerced them into sexual relationships. Long's attorney denies those allegations and dismisses these photos that have now emerged in the wake of the scandal. Attorney B.J. Bernstein, who represents the three men named in the lawsuits, said that Long actually sent these photos of himself wearing tight shirts to the fourth man not named in the litigation. She says it's just an example of inappropriate conduct. Church members say that the image of Long that they embrace is the mentor and the spiritual counselor who has helped young people in need. Tonight, an I-Team exclusive, new revelations in the sex scandal surrounding Bishop Eddie Long. We wanted to ask you about Bishop Eddie Long. Oh. Oh, no comment. Come on. The Fox 5 I-Team reveals the identity of another accuser. Relationships are hard. People lie. People steal. Your heart. Right now, the mystery surrounding Centino Camp and his relationship with Eddie Long. The I-Team has uncovered that there was a fifth accuser in the Bishop Eddie Long sexual misconduct case. He never filed a lawsuit, and his name was kept a secret. But Centino, Centino Kemp's allegations of sexual misconduct against Bishop Eddie Long brought him front and center into the recent settlement negotiations. Senior I-Team reporter Dale Russell has crisscrossed the city searching for the mysterious fifth young man and is here now with his exclusive report. Dale. Tom Centino Kemp, sometimes called Centineo, is young, barely 22. We're told he met Bishop Long years ago. He has Eddie Long's name tattooed on his wrist, and he's currently recording songs written from the perspective of an angry, bitter lover. Centineo? Centineo Kemp? Hi, Dale Russell of Fox 5 I team. How are you for doing? nearly two months, we searched all over Atlanta for Centino Kemp. You and finally music? caught up yeah. with him leaving the small recording studio. He was happy to talk about his music. You recording music? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm just recording Who some music. That's it. Some I, songs for iTunes and YouTube. But he didn't want to talk about anything else. We wanted to ask you about Bishop Eddie Long. Oh. Oh, no comment. Come on. Can we just talk to you for a second? But I am not the man that's being portrayed on the television. The well-known sex scandal involving Bishop Eddie Long began when four young men, all former members of the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, filed suit accusing the bishop of lavishing money, trips, and gifts on the young adults while having sexual contact with them. You are not a man, you are a monster. The case was finally settled in secret back in May. Sources tell us an undisclosed amount of money was paid to the young men. Bishop Long in court papers denied the allegations and issued a statement saying it was time to move forward. After the initial lawsuits were filed, Centino Kemp came forward with additional allegations of sexual misconduct against Bishop Eddie Long. He then became part of the settlement talks. He was the mystery man. His name never made public. But the I-team has learned he may have played a significant role in the mediation. Relationships are hard. People lie. People steal. Your heart. Our source says Kemp has been taking part in countless $100 an hour sessions in Atlanta recording studios for the past two months. In this video, Kemp works on one of five songs he has recorded. Some are profanity-laced, sexually charged stories of angry, jilted lovers, like his song called Pornography. Pornography, I go crazy while you're watching me. 
What's the album called? No Regrets. No Regrets? Yeah. But the song you're working on is called... Pornography. Pornography. <laughs> What's the meaning of it? Pornography is just a fun dance song. Yeah. Like you just can get loose and wild and look at that. According to various social media posts, Santino Kemp is 22 years old, single, tattooed, and always sporting different looks. The relationship meant enough for him to tattoo Eddie Long's name on his wrist, followed by the words, never a mistake, always a lesson. Sources say Kemp joined in the settlement talks after he heard about the other young men's lawsuits. And though he never sued, he became a part of the final settlement. One lawyer familiar with the case confirmed Kemp was involved and was different from the other young men, one piece of the puzzle that never fit, and he made the case more difficult. In the Bahamas, they call me Centennial, and the passport says Centeno, so okay. I've been confused all my life. Bishop Eddie Long had no comment about Centeno Kemp. Just one second, and Kemp had nothing to say about the bishop. After walking away from our question, he later sprinted to an awaiting stretch limousine. The secret accuser in the Bishop Long sex scandal drove off, still a mystery, still dreaming of stardom. You know, what he had done for, for, for the body of Christ. Yeah, it is uh, very hard uh, to come behind a legend. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so much of Atlanta is synonymous with Bishop Long. Yes. Um, so there were only two billboards in Atlanta, Jermaine Dupree and Newbirth. <laughs> come uh, on, so, come on. <laughs> you know, so if you're welcome to Atlanta. If, right. you, if you ain't saved, you're so, so deaf. Right. If, if you are, watch this. Right. You know, oh, so come on, watch this, watch th this, Those watch were this. the two options. Right, um, yes. And so being a student here, at uh, Morehouse in the heyday of new birth. Yeah. Uh, I saw it in its meteoric rise and uh, never in a million years did I ever think I'd be living in Atlanta and I never thought I'd be Baptist. Um, I'm third generation AME. AME, right. Yeah. Uh, my dad was the presiding bishop of the AME church. Uh, so when I left both Baltimore and the AME Church. Ooh, it was that was a thing. It was LeBron going to Miami. Ooh. I mean, my, my jersey was being burned in the streets. Really? Uh, and it was a real walk of faith. I didn't know anybody at New Birth. Uh, so I had to really trust God to uh, figure out what to do. I was also contending with a church that was in full grief. Like literal. Oh, no, real. Real grief. Oh, yeah. The, those of you who don't know, uh, if you have a friend who lives in London, ask them what it was like after the queen died. Listen, That's what it was at Newburgh. It was. Yeah. Uh, so to try to heal them and cast vision. Uh, so they crying with one eye open like, OK, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. uh, because I wasn't a spiritual son of bishops. I didn't come out of that church. Um, so they, they, uh, really had to trust in faith. And so it's been, uh, it's been a journey. Yeah. You know, how does it feel for somebody who didn't want that life, quote yes. unquote, Yeah. but then you were called to that life. So yes. now you're like, you're dealing with Jamal. Yeah. The human. Yes. And Jamal, the calling. Yeah. You yeah. can't be called. Uh, and for those of you in mental health, please hear my heart. You can't be called and not function at a level of a bipolar reality. And so I think that the black church has got to have a real come to Jesus meeting uh, and get into the 21st century. I got up, Rashawn, after the Supreme Court uh, ruling about uh, that new birth and me are pro-choice. But we don't say anything because a lot of black churches are white evangelicals in drag and they don't know who it is that they are because their politics are thrown off and don't really speak to you. OK, I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't really speak to what's happening in the culture because I'm mindful that I'm not after Christians. I'm after people who don't go to church. And a lot of churches are just recycling people from other churches. That's not who I'm after. I'm looking for people that smell like weed.